Good morning! While you're watching this, I'm actually playing golf for a change. Yeah, and don't get out much these days at the moment. Played last Sunday, it was below freezing, ground was rock hard, we were on temporary greens. It was pretty miserable to be honest. Although I did set a new record, a new personal best for hitting the 9-iron. See, I wanted to hit it only 120 yards, and I hit it 185. That's how hard the ground was. Didn't record it. You're carrying around a metal tripod when it is below freezing, and it's freezing your hand. It isn't quite as much fun as you can possibly imagine. Now, this video is about golf and some golf choices I've got to make in the very near future. But first, it's about a road. Now I get to Lillybrook up a road called the A417. It comes out of Gloucester, out of the valley, up a steep hill. And then I go down a slightly smaller road and that takes me to Lillybrook. I go downhill back to Lillybrook. Now that road is a bottleneck and it's an accident black spot and as it's very steep, you get broken down lorries on it quite often. And cars, granted, too. So you never know when it's going to grind to a halt and you're just going to sit there in the traffic in your car for some considerable time. And the reason why it is such a mess is it's because it isn't four lanes like the rest of it. It's four lanes to the foot of the hill and then you've got about three and a half, four miles of lesser road. You may have heard of it. At the top there's a pub called the Air Balloon and the Air Balloon Roundabout and it can be an absolute nightmare. Now for the last 20 years they've been talking about improving this three and a half, four mile section. Well they've come up with a plan that they've finally agreed, by, agreed on and they've got the money and they're starting in the autumn. A part of the job is to lower the steepness from 10% to 8%. So they've got thousands and thousands of tons of material to remove. They're also turning it into a four lane, they're making it wider. There's new bridges to go in, central reservation down the middle, just like any other dual carriageway. Now I don't know how they're going to keep it open. I mean you can't lower one side and then leave one lane up here because it's just going to collapse. There's nothing, once you've removed the side of it there's nothing supporting it. So they're going to have to close it. They say they start work in autumn and it's going to take three years. Now you might say oh it's okay Simon they're going to start at the far end it's not going to affect you for some considerable time. But the pub closed just before New Year, the air balloon. And it's set for demolition, so you've got to assume that they're going to be starting at this end, the end that I use. And everyone else, it's not just me. It's not just me going up that hill and going to uh, Lillybrook. It's other people who go up that hill and go to Cotswold Hills. Cotswold Hills Golf Course is almost right on the roundabout. So uh, there must be a lot of people who live in the valley at the foot of the hill who play at Cotswold Hills who are going to be facing the same dilemma. So we're on the move. Now I have gone the valley road. You can go, you can go all the way around the hill at the same level on the valley road which takes you through the middle of Cheltenham. Now if you've ever tried driving through the middle of Cheltenham at about half past four or quarter five in the evening, um, you'll know that that isn't a great deal of fun either. So we're going to move golf clubs basically. And where are we going to go? Now I know there will be well-meaning people in the comments who say, well stay at Lillybrook until the traffic gets too bad. You've got spring, you've got summer, then you're into autumn before they start the work. Don't worry about it, stay at Lillybrook. And there'll be other people who say, oh, you need to come and join this club or join that club, come and join my club. 
Well, everybody is different and everybody has different needs and wants. And I have to address my needs and wants and those of my kids and my mates and come to some sort of compromise about what we're going to do. And although your suggestions will be well-meaning, they're suggestions based on what you want, not on what I want. So let's start with a list of wants. So starting at the beginning, it's got to be affordable. See, when I had my little I might be retiring early scare before Christmas and I was worried for a number of weeks about what I was going to do, I had a chat with Basher about money because um, he's the same age as me and we both have plans to retire at about the same age, about 62 if we can get that far along without the company getting rid of us. And we obviously need a golf course that is affordable in retirement. It's not just a question of it being affordable now when I'm in full employment and I can work in here on Saturdays and earn some extra money. It's also got to be affordable when I retire. So we're looking at somewhere that will cost less than Lillybrook, essentially, in retirement. I mean, Basher said when he retires, he'll probably drop down to being a five-day member instead of a seven-day member. And that's rather sensible. It costs you less money. You've got five days a week to play golf. You don't need to be a member that can play on weekends. Plus, some golf courses allow you a little discount when you get to age 65, retirement age. The old senior citizen's discount. So... That's also got to be factored in. So the first thing it's got to be is affordable. And the second thing is no joining fees. Joining fees are a bit old fashioned, a bit archaic. You don't pay a joining fee to join a gym. You don't pay a joining fee to join a, a sports complex where you can play a variety of different sports. You just pay your monthly fee. So a joining fee in golf is a bit, bit old-fashioned. Second point, it's about half an hour drive is my limit. The Lillybrook is about 25 minutes, except when the road is uh, messed up, in which case it can take 45 minutes and sometimes over an hour. Now my nearest club is 11 minutes away. So when I say 30 minutes, I'm talking about 19 minutes beyond my nearest club. So it's not that far, actually. So that cuts out some golf courses which are over half an hour away from me. Number three on the list. Practice facilities. I'd like some, and I don't want to have to pay for them. You know, if you're heading into retirement, as the boiler fires up, you know, Every driving range around here is a minimum of £10 for 100 balls now. Some of them are 11 12 even £16 I've heard for 100 balls. I can't afford that in full employment, so I'm definitely not going to afford it in retirement. So I'm looking for a golf course with an old-fashioned thing called a field that you hit your balls in for free, you go pick them up and you go hit them again for free. All golf clubs had these things, but they've since put in driving ranges. Now Lillybrook has a practice ground, although it's not open at the moment. I think it's due to open sometime this year, and they have told us that you will have to pay to use a field that is owned by the members. How does that work out? Hmm. So yeah, I want to be able to practice for free, especially now. I mean, I've hardly played golf at all since I had COVID in the middle of October. We've had a bit of snow, we've had frost. The golf course has been too busy to get a tee time on some days. Uh, I've got no practice facilities. And I really don't want to be paying 10, 11 pounds for a hundred balls. So I've hardly played. 
Right now, you're watching this, I'm at Lillybrook playing and probably struggling to break 95. Talking of which, I'd like a par 72. I'd like four par 5s to have a crack at instead of one. Lillybrook is a par 69. Now I like a 69 as much as the next guy, but a par 72 is much better. And it's more relatable. If I'm talking about breaking 90 in a video, which I will be because I probably can't break 90 myself, then we, we all know, right, par 72, 90, he's talking about being better than 18 over par. So being better than dropping one stroke a hole. And if I'm talking about breaking 80, I'm not talking about being 9 over par, I'm talking about being 7 over par. And you understand that. You understand these figures far better than me having to go, I'm breaking 90, but it's a par 69, so I'm breaking 87. It kind of like gets messed up. And the last thing for me is value for money. What do I mean by value for money? Quite simply this. You've got a thousand pounds in your pocket. You decide not to join a golf club. You're gonna play away days all year. You pay an average of say 30 pounds a round, which seems reasonable. Some would be 25 quid, some would be 35 quid, average 30. For your thousand pounds, you get 33 rounds of golf. If I take my thousand pounds and join a golf club, then I've got 365 days a year. And I can play quite easily 110, 120 rounds against your 33 for the same money. So my unit price is under 10 pounds. As long as I'm knocking in 110 rounds in a year, I'm in clover, 10 pounds a round. You're paying 30 pounds a round. That is the whole point of being a member of a golf club. It's to drive your unit cost down. You can play more, so you play better. You play better than the guy who's, not, who's playing once every 10 days. If you're playing five times every 10 days, or, or maybe only four times every 10 days. It's better for your golf. It's better for your game. You get more enjoyment out of it than every time you turn up you're struggling because you haven't picked up a glove, a club in 10 days. So in order to do that, you want a golf course which isn't particularly busy. Or rather is busy during the day, but after work and on the weekend, it isn't heaving. And of course, a quiet golf course makes it far easier for me to actually record. You know, I don't like recording when I've got a group up behind me because I don't want to annoy the people behind me. Not, I've got nothing against whoever's behind me. I just don't want to annoy them. So if the golf course is busy, the camera doesn't come with me, which is why I'm not recording today because every tea time is taken, except for the tea times after the time that you can't play 18, you know, the ones later on this afternoon and it's dark by five o'clock so you can only play 10 holes or something. Now Lilybrook um, have 800 members. So uh, I'll leave you to work out how often you think I might have played through 2022 and whether I got value for money out of 2022 or not. I, I, I won't pass my own comment. I think you can work it out yourself. So that's it. We're moving on. Now I may not actually record anything until the 1st of March when we finally decided and settled upon and paid for a new golf club. We've got some ideas in mind, but I'll, I'll keep those to myself. I'd rather just say, here I am, or here we are rather, because there's several of us going, and all for the same reason. Road, practice, value for money, 
par 72. We're all going for the same reasons. So until then, you might not actually see any golf. Um, unless, of course, I can get out when the golf course is quiet. But um, hang on. If you don't see anything until the beginning of March, when is that? It's the 27th today, isn't it? So it's, uh, it's four. You know, if you don't see anything for five weeks, just hang on. It'll be coming and it'll be somewhere new. Cheerio.